Hey you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're having a great day or night wherever you are and you're staying safe indoors. In today's video, I'm going to be answering all of your hair care related questions that you guys asked me on Instagram. Now, I haven't done a YouTube video on hair care in really long, you guys. Oh my God, it's been a while. And that's why I put up a story on Instagram asking you all to drop in all of your questions so that I could answer all of them in one single video. Now, if you're new here, hi, my name is Preeti. I'm India's first cruelty-free beauty blogger. I talk about all things cruelty-free, which means products that are not tested on animals. And I also cover vegan beauty and lifestyle tips. Now, if this is the kind of content that you resonate with, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell so that you're notified every time I put up a video and continue watching today's video now when i put up the story i honestly did not anticipate the kind of response i got i got so many questions from all of you so i'm really happy about that this way i can answer more questions and clarify more doubts on hair care for all of you some of them were repetitions like a lot of you guys asked the same questions some of them are really unique questions that i've not answered before either here or on instagram so today i'm going to be answering all of those queries now before i jump into this video i need to put up a disclaimer that i haven't done in a while but this video requires it so sing it along with me you guys beauty skincare hair care subjective what might work for you might not work for me and vice versa it's really important to keep all of this in mind because everybody's experience with the same product is very different now the first question that I got is from Anjali and she says I'm getting acne around the hairline what do you recommend now the reason why we get acne around the hairline is mainly because we have a very very greasy scalp also we are not washing the makeup that settles in our hairline so a lot of times when you do makeup you double cleanse and everything but you don't clean the hairline and that's where all the makeup is still sitting and clogging your pores this can cause acne around the hairline not just that if you have dandruff the chances of getting acne around your hairline is very very high a few things that you can do is check if you have dandruff and if you do treat that also if your scalp is really greasy make sure that your hair is away from your face so right now for instance you see how my hair is touching my face but I've got makeup so it creates this layer but if I don't have any makeup on my skin usually my hair is tied back so that I don't get acne on my cheeks and on my hairline now if you're a curly girl and you've done a whole CGM routine make sure to wash your face after the routine a lot of times the serums the leave-ins the butters everything just trickle down and they settle in here and that causes acne is it possible to increase thickness of our hair if yes how I'm going to be 100% honest here, you guys. There is no way to increase the thickness of your hair. Now, you need to see your genetics. If your mom, your dad, your grandma, your grandpa all have thin hair, you will have thin hair. Now, I have curly hair and I don't have the thickest hair. My hair is still fine. It's not very thick. But my grandma has curly hair. My dad has curly hair. And that's why I have curly hair, right? So now, if your hair in your family is generally thinner, there are high chances that your hair is going to be thin and you can't really do much about it. You can control hair fall and reduce hair thinning, which means, you know, you will have more hair on your scalp, but you can't really increase the thickness of your hair. So I have curly wavy hair, right? I can't really get those coils because my hair is not that thick. So this is the max curly or, you know, maybe you can go a little more curlier than this, but that's about it. And if I don't use any products, my hair will fall flat because I have fine hair. I don't have the thickest hair out there. Next question is by Roop and she asked me, should I use oil on my hair if I have oily, greasy scalp? Um, okay, let me put it this way. If you have oily skin on your face, you will use lightweight moisturizers. You won't use a lot of oily products, right? So there are high chances if your skin on your face is very oily, your scalp is pretty oily too. So your overall skin type is oily, which means you don't have to do a solid chumpy. Your scalp is fine. What you need instead is a water-based serum. So something like the Hair Vitalizer from Indulgio. It is one of my all-time favorite products, you guys. It's so beautiful for the scalp because not only does it reduce itchiness and inflammation, it also boosts hair growth. Every week, I would suggest using the Flossum Dense Intense Mask. It is one of my all-time favorites. It's got charcoal. It really exfoliates the scalp and reduces all of that sebum production. It really regulates it. I absolutely love that mask. Another thing that you can do is because you're not going to be oiling your whole hair. It's really not needed. You don't have to oil your whole hair. What you can do instead is use a hair mask. I've done a video on my favorite hair mask. Check it out. You can also use a scalp mask if you want. Something like the Pure by Priyanka Root Mask. Really good stuff. Another thing, guys, don't do a solid chumpy on your hair with a lot of oil, you know, with oil dripping all over your hair because these are all dead ends. They don't need oil. They need conditioning in terms of protein and moisture, which you can do with a hair mask. Oil just sits on the surface and doesn't do much. OK, it's great for a serum. It's great on the scalp, but on the hair, it really doesn't do much. 
Now, just like a plant where all the main nutrients are used by the roots, you don't put the nutrients on the leaves. So it's the same thing with oils that have chili, horsetail, onion, all of that. Use it on your scalp, you guys. Solo Boo Boo asked me, <laughs> Solo Boo Boo, such a cute username. Please suggest hair mask or serum for dry, damaged, fizzy hair. Thank you. Okay, so um, a hair mask for very, very dry hair. Uh, definitely my favorite ones are from Aveda, the newly launched range. It is so, so good. I've been talking about it so much on Instagram. It's expensive, but it really does the job, you guys. Flossum has good hair masks as well. The Kinky Berries one, as well as the Cake Therapy one, really good stuff. Not the highest in terms of protein balance, but very, very moisturizing and will definitely reduce frizz. I've also done a video on all my favorite hair masks. You can check it out as well. As for serums, you guys, serum has to be the last step, okay? So after you've showered and you know, you've washed your hair, you've used conditioner, washed off the conditioner, used the leave-in and all of that, once your hair is 100% dry is when you go in with the serum. The serums that I absolutely love is the newly launched one from Curl Up, the one from Disguise Cosmetics, the Rainbow Glow Oil. Oh my God, you guys, I absolutely love it. I also did a reel recently on Instagram where I spoke about my favorite hair serums. So these are really good. You can definitely try them out. Keithika asks, hair feels rough on the day of hair wash. Next day, it tames and stays in place with air drying. Any idea why? Okay, so this could be one of the two reasons. Either your shampoo is not washing off your hair really, really well, you have a lot of product residue, which is why it feels very rough, or your shampoo and conditioner have very high protein, which means it takes some time for moisture to seep in and then it feels better. So the next day after air drying, where you know you have moisture back in your hair, your hair feels more relaxed. So what you need to do is use a good hair mask that has protein and moisture balance, or you could just use a very moisturizing mask like the ones I mentioned earlier, uh, the ones from Kinky Berries, the ones from Aveda, even the Pure by Priyanka hair mask is really good. So these are really nice to make your hair soft and smooth. Also try using a conditioner that is very, very moisturizing yet has a good protein balance so that you don't have a protein overload in your hair. Uh, the newly launched one from Maintain is superb, you guys. I absolutely love it. It's not just for curly hair, it's for all hair types. It's a very, very moisturizing conditioner. These are the few things that you can do. Also, make sure that you sleep on a satin pillowcase because that way you reduce friction and your hair doesn't feel that rough on the day of your shower. Aishwarya asks, hair oil to reduce frizziness. Guys, oils cannot reduce frizziness. Oils are meant to boost the hair growth of your hair. And as a final step, a serum, a very lightweight oil, can control the frizz. But between both of these steps, you need to use a good shampoo that is sulfate-free. You need to use a moisturizing conditioner. And you need to use a hair mask at least once or twice a month to improve the moisture balance in your hair. This is the only way you can reduce frizz. And a serum to lock in all of that moisture so that you don't have any moisture loss which causes frizziness. Priya asks, will coloring damage my hair? I have wavy hair, same like your hair. Yes, coloring, bleaching your hair will 100% damage your hair. It's a foreign body that is being introduced to your hair. You're bleaching your hair, you're taking the color off, you're taking the pigment off of your hair, right? It is going to be damaging. Any color treatment is damaging to the hair. Life's too short, live your life, get your hair colored, but remember that it will damage your hair. The only thing that you can do is take better care of your hair after you've got it colored. So a lot of deep conditioning, make sure that you're using satin pillowcases to sleep on, reduce the friction, it reduces hair break, Package. make sure that you have a serum on your hair protecting it from humidity outside now you mentioned you have wavy hair just like mine so what you can do is use the curl up or the fix my curls leave-ins both of these are amazing the curl creams i absolutely love them they will definitely reduce frizziness to a large extent especially after you've got your hair colored if you can afford it get an olaplex treatment olaplex is amazing it's also cruelty free now i absolutely love it for my hair Get a treatment done at least once a month, if not more. It really helps to nourish your hair and reduce any kind of frizziness. Not really reverse the damage, but repair the damage that's already there to a large extent. Jazz Nair asks, how to manage frizz on the neck area? Hair gets very tangled, causing breakage. Now, this is something that I suffer from too, you guys, because I don't know if you can see, this whole area either falls really flat, and when I'm working out, it gets really frizzy. The only thing that you can do if you have extremely frizzy hair there is use more leave-in conditioner it reduces the frizz use a bonnet when you sleep at night that way your hair is not moving around even if you're sleeping on a satin pillowcase having a bonnet really helps keep your hair in place okay because at night we are moving around and the hair is all over the place so that
that will really help to reduce the knots and the frizziness in that area. Another thing that I do when I notice that the frizz is too much, I actually just wash that area just with water and then I go in with my leave-in again and with my gel again. Sometimes I don't even need a gel because there's a lot of residue of gel already from before and I style that section again. This prevents severe frizziness and knots. So maybe you can try this out as well. What to do if my hair falls flat because of using sulfate-free shampoos? This is one of the most commonly asked questions in my DMs, you guys. Now, sulfate-free shampoos cannot remove all of the grime, all of that buildup, all of that greasy mess to a large extent as compared to sulfate shampoos, okay? Now, the reason why your hair is falling flat is because it has a lot of buildup. To remove the buildup, what you can do is use the Dense Intense Hair Mask from Flossum at least once a week. It really scrubs your scalp and removes all of the buildup. It also has charcoal. Charcoal is amazing. The charcoal soaps from uh, Soap Square are really good. You can also use the Clarifying Shampoo from Fix My Curls. Even though it's a curly girl brand, you guys, you can still use their products. It's got a very, very good formula for removing all the buildup. You can also do a DIY with apple cider vinegar. It's called an apple cider vinegar wash. It really helps to remove any buildup. The same person has asked me, I started going silicone and sulfate free, but then my hair started losing volume and shine. Now, this is a very common problem, mainly because your hair is probably still transitioning. It could take weeks, months, years for your hair to transition completely. For me, it took a few weeks. And in that process, I realized that my hair was very lackluster. What you can do is an Olaplex treatment. Olaplex is amazing, you guys. Do that. It's going to really help you. And after that, you can invest in high quality hair mask. Make sure your protein and moisture balance in the hair mask, shampoo, conditioners is a solid because if you have too much protein your hair is not going to be soft and smooth it's going to be very hay like you will need moisture to make it soft and bouncy invest in good hair serums after your whole hair care routine use a hair serum to lock in all that moisture and add a nice shine to your hair so misha wants to know the best hair mask and hair care for growth the best hair mask for growth, I mean, I'm going to tell you a few oils first. Juicy Chemistry Chili Horsetail Serum is amazing for boosting hair growth, you guys. I had a lot of bald patches here, and if you can see, I have a lot of baby hair growing through. The Hair Vitalizer range from Indulgio is also really good, you guys. It really boosted my hair growth, and it made my crown area so soft, and the hair was just amazing. I absolutely love that range. Highly recommend it. What you can also do is do some scalp massages, you know, when you oil your hair, scalp massage so that it boosts your blood circulation and that further improves the quality of your scalp health switch to sulfate free shampoos you guys it's really going to help you reduce your hair fall boost your hair growth make sure you're clarifying at least once a week so that you don't have any buildup on your scalp and also invest in satin pillowcases and satin bonnets they reduce friction and it really protects your hair follicles okay at night because your hair is not rubbing against cotton which is absorbing all of the moisture sana has asked amount of conditioner to be used Used to get to reduce the frizz um, the amount of conditioner is different for everybody I require a lot of conditioner you guys because I have baby curly hair and when I tell you it gets frizzy it gets frizzy okay so I use a lot of conditioner mainly because I also detangle in the shower it's all trial and error you guys so if your hair requires more conditioner you will know when you dry your hair or when you're styling your hair so play around with the quantities and see what works for you because it's not going to be the same depending on your hair length depending on your hair type depending on your weather everything needs to be taken into consideration kanchana has asked hi i work out daily and my scalp has dandruff any product recommendation to have clean scalp for dandruff you guys i would recommend using the hair mask from juicy chemistry i absolutely love it it reduces itchiness as well make sure you use the dense intense flossum hair mask for exfoliating your scalp make sure that you're washing your hair at least twice or thrice a week and not more than that because the more you wash your hair the more flaky the more dandruffy the more oily it's going to get it just ruins the ph balance of your scalp if you are not drying out your scalp after workout you can actually make your dandruff worse it's just going to be stinky sweaty smelly and all of that we don't want that so dry your scalp after workout make sure that you're de-stressing yourself from time to time and eating healthy food because junk food can actually make your scalp health really bad your skin health everything pretty bad how do you revive your curly hair after straightening it does it not damage your hair 
I don't straighten my hair very often. I actually straighten it just once or twice a month and that's about it. And usually it's not even with a straightener, it's just blow dried because I have wavy hair and it's very easy to blow dry them and just like straighten them out. If you have tight coils, then it could be a little bit of an issue, but because I have wavy hair, it just springs back to life very fast. Not gonna lie though, every time I've either blow dried or straightened my hair, it takes me a good two to three washes to get the curl pattern back. And even then it's not 100%. Mainly because, you know, when you straighten or you blow dry your hair, you really damage the curl pattern. So that's when I basically do more intensive hair mask, you know, something like a DC or I'll use a protein rich shampoo. I'll use a protein rich hair mask and I make sure that my hair is getting all of those nutrients back to form the right curls. Tamana asked me, do you color or dye your gray hair? If you have any, I'm too nervous to try. Guys, I'm still in my 20s. I don't have any white hair. Um, I only bleach or color my hair from the bottom up mainly because I like it when my hair is growing and it gives me like a nice ombre effect with a balayage. So that's usually the hair color that I go for. I don't color my roots at all. Um, I don't like damaging my scalp and my virgin hair right here. I just go with the flow with this. Ashita has asked what to do to avoid hair fall. Honestly, don't stress too much. I know it's easier said than done, but excessive stress causes hair fall. That's one of the biggest factors that contributes to hair fall make sure you get a check on your hormones okay a lot of people who have pcod suffer from severe hair fall get your thyroid checked that's really really important as well make sure that you're working out regularly you guys you don't have to go haywire and go with your intensive workouts just make sure you're squeezing in 40 minutes of cardio like 30 minutes of walking and maybe like 10 minutes of ab crunches and weights and whatnot at least four to five times a week Make sure that you're eating protein-rich food that has biotin, keratin, protein, very important. So the supplements that I take are um, from Chic Nutrix, the biotin supplements, really, really good. Those are the only supplements that I've been taking for my hair. And also I follow a very protein-rich diet. Even though I'm vegan, I have a very hardcore protein-rich diet. Along with that, it's also important to use sulfate-free shampoos because they significantly reduce your hair fall, you guys. Make sure that you're nourishing your scalp. Use the right oil. Oils, you know the oils from Shesha the Neely Bringadi is really nice the juicy chemistry chili horsetail serum is so nice their hair masks are amazing you can also use the hair growth vitalizer from Indulge you these are very good products to boost the health of your scalp as well as the virgin hair that's been growing out the Sampurna oil and the onion hair oil from pure by Priyanka is really good again you don't have to buy all of these just buy one or two of them and you're good to go the next question is how to prevent split ends. Now, believe it or not, this is one of the most commonly asked questions along with frizzy hair care. Now, if you want to avoid split ends, you need to make sure that your hair is completely moisturized. Use a good leave-in conditioner. Use good deep conditioners at least once or twice a month. Make sure you're using a serum that protects your hair, that coats your hair. I've spoken about serums so much on Instagram as well as here, even in this video in the last few minutes. Try using good serums. They will really prevent your hair from getting frizzy. Now, the reason why we get split ends is mainly because your hair is not very nourished. It's very dry. It's frizzy. And now it's just cracking up. Up, cracking open and you need to prevent that olaplex if you can afford it go for olaplex any day but if you can't afford it then these are the things that you can do worse comes to worse if you have a lot of split ends get a big chop just chop all of those dead ends you cannot reverse a split end please don't fall for all of those commercials and any blogger that tells you you can reverse a split end split ends will close will never happen you cannot close a split end you can only prevent them from happening and you can go for a big chop post hair color can if you've got your hair colored, make sure that you're deep conditioning regularly. Use Olaplex and use a shampoo that is specially designed for colored hair. Usually these are sulfate-free shampoos, but they will also prevent your hair color from just bleeding out. Extreme flaky and itchy scalp, please. Use the hair mask from Juicy Chemistry, you guys. That hair mask, the neem one, is so, so good. The Sampurna oil from Pure by Priyanka and the Neely Bringadi oil from Shesha, both of these also amazing, you guys. They have reduced itchiness on my scalp like no other. Anti-dandruff shampoo from Vilva, really good stuff. Anti-dandruff shampoo bar from Soap Square, really, really good stuff as well. Permanent solution for flaky, dry scalp, honey, there's nothing permanent. You will need to keep a check on your diet. You will need to experiment with different products. It really helps to improve your scalp health and the quality of your hair. You will need to invest in good quality hair masks regularly. And you will have to keep a check on your hormones, on your thyroid. You will need to also work out on time and keep your nutrition intact. Is there any remedy to regrow lost hair? 
Honestly, you guys, there are so many remedies, but every single person's body is different. So for me, for example, I didn't have to go through any laser or PRP treatments. I just used Chili Horsetail Serum and the Heavy Vitalizer from Indulgio. Worked really well. Even Onion Hair Oils from Ray Naturals, Pure by Priyanka. Worked superb. Neely Bringadi Oil from Shesha, Sampuna Hair Oil from Pure by Priyanka. I keep saying these same words over and over again because they have worked really well for me. I didn't have to do any PRP treatments or I didn't have to do any laser treatments for my scalp. Um, at the dermats however some people will have to do that because you know their scalp simply needs that extra boost and all of these oils simply don't do the job again you will have to keep a check on your nutrition you need to have a nutritionist dietitian or a gynac or a dermat any of these or all of these on board to understand why you have this hair fall so you need to get to the root cause the grassroot level of this problem and only then move upward so you need to figure out what is going on internally and then move to external forces how do you take care of your scalp in summers now in summers my scalp is just always sweaty you guys so i need to make sure that my scalp is considerably dry especially after i've come from outside or after i've worked out and whatnot i open up my hair and make sure it's completely dried before i can tie it up again this way my hair is not stinky it's not just wet and all grimy and whatnot that really helps i also use a lot of rose water on my scalp to just calm down any inflammation i use aloe gel in my hair mask to calm any inflammation again i don't leave aloe gel overnight because it's very cold and i've got sinusitis so it can give me a really bad migraine but um it's really good for reducing any sort of inflammation i also increase the number of times i wash my hair so when it's not summers i wash my hair once every four days but in summers i wash it every two or three days mainly because it can get really really grimy and really oily i also make it a point to cleanse my scalp and hair really well with an apple cider vinegar wash or with a clarifying shampoo and i really like to spritz my hair with hair mist i'm absolutely loving it like the mist from soap square is really nice i still have quite a bit of that left it works really well on reducing itchiness on my scalp one of the most important things is being hydrated and eating healthy i reduce my junk food intake drastically in summers you guys because it's so hot and my body just can't digest it so it's usually fresh fruits and fresh vegetables and smoothies and salad bowls and all of that my hair feels so dehydrated suggest something for it to revive honestly if your hair has said bye girl i'm out you will need to do an Olaplex treatment because if your hair has given up on you and you've put her through a lot, you will need to do an Olaplex treatment. It revives your hair like no other and make sure that you're masking regularly. Use good hair masks. I've already spoken about a lot of them in my YouTube video, but please, please, please invest in good quality shampoos, conditioners, leave-ins and serums. I've spoken about all of these on my YouTube channel. I'm going to leave a link to all of those videos in the description below. And that's it, you guys. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please hit that like button. I tried to answer as many questions as I possibly could. Majority of the questions, as you would have noticed, were around dry hair, frizzy hair, hair falls, split ends. And these are questions that every single person has asked me whenever I have put up any Q&A. I really hope this is helpful for you all. These tips will not just help curly, wavy hair, but also straight hair, normal hair types. This is going to be very useful to every single person. I didn't want to do a PR unboxing or a skincare or hair care routine. I just wanted to sit here and answer all of your questions, just like a chit chat of some sorts. I really, really hope you enjoyed watching this. I'm going to take your leave now, you guys. But before I go, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my previous videos right here. I will catch you all later. Till then, take care of yourself and your hair. Bye.